Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, something called an ankle brachial index or an ABI. Uh, this is uh, something that we use. I want to just share a little story. We have a, a number of patients in the office that um, don't really have symptoms, um, but they have a lot of circulatory problems. And the issue is with clogging of the arteries, um, give you an example. If you have clogging in, in, in the brain, you're not going to notice it and it could cause a stroke, right? And in the brain or in the carotids, clogging in the heart could cause a heart attack. Um, and then there's clogging that's in the legs, which causes different symptoms, but very commonly are misunderstood, especially if a patient has neuropathy or another type of thing uh, that they can't feel in their legs, or they're not aware of it, this type of a cramping, they think it's just normal that they have to stop every so often from walking. And that's called peripheral arterial disease. And that's what this tests for PAD or peripheral arterial disease. So basically, um, it, it's a combination of testing the arm pressure and comparing it to the ankle pressure, and they should be equal. So when you divide one over the other, it should equal one. And anything different than that could uh, pose a problem or have some clogging in the arteries. So, so the benefits of doing an ABI or a PadNet, which we do in the office, is can be done in 45 minutes or less in the office. It's covered by insurance. You don't have to go to the hospital and you can find potential limb-threatening conditions, and this is why we do it for our patients. So what does the report show? Well, the report shows, it shows these, these little waveforms, and what you're looking for is a, a dichrotic notch. Basically, it has this little notch uh, as, it's, as it's in here, and these are kind of abnormal ones, but you're gonna see it go up and then a little notch right here, and then it go down, and these are normal waveforms, and you compare the right side to the left. So normally the ankle, brachial index is one, so meaning the arm is one and the ankle is one, and this is a little bit diminished on the left, but the real key is in the toe. When you look at the toe, if the toe is really diminished, it can be uh, a problematic, and that's where if they have a wound on the toe or the, or the foot, it can be really slow to heal. A lot of times these patients, they don't have any symptoms until they develop a wound, and that wound won't heal, and it might not be from walking on it like it's a typical, but it could be from the circulation. Um, what are the reasons to do an ankle brachial index? If you have a history of tobacco use, because tobacco greatly increases the cause of, of circulatory issues. If you have diabetes, okay, specifically diabetes, they have a higher chance of having uh, circulatory issues. And if you're over the age of 50, okay, diabetes over the age of 50, and if you're over the age of 65, or I usually use 70 in the office, and non-diabetic, okay, so non-diabetics over the age of 70, uh, high cholesterol, blood pressure, family history of heart disease, and the main thing is if you have a leg pain, a cut, or a wound, or an ulcer that, that, that's not healing, that's slow to heal, that would be a great reason. The leg pain is typically called claudication. It's a cramping pain when you're walking. So here's an example of the test results that they're going to get. And if it's 1 to 1.4, it's normal. If it's above this, it could be non-compressible. Sometimes they have hardening of the arteries where it gets almost like thickened in the middle, and it can't push down as much. That's what's called non-compressible. Um, Point not, 1 to 0.9 is acceptable, so they don't need a vascular referral. Um, if they have 0.8 to 0.9, there's some arterial disease. And what we usually recommend for these risk factors is exercise. Exercise is the best thing, a therapeutic exercise program. And then if it's really low, if they have moderate to severe, usually in our area, uh, the moderate ones we kind of deal with uh, because the, the vascular people don't like to see everyone that has moderate disease unless they have symptoms, meaning if they have cramping pain or claudication or a wound, that's when we send them to a vascular specialist, okay? And that could be an uh, a endovascular uh, surgeon, it could be a vascular surgeon, and it could be also an interventional radiologist. Those are the three that we refer to. The toe brachial index, really, um, this is the issue where you look at just the big toe, you put on the big toe, and if it's diminished, that just means if you have a wound on the foot, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So the severe ones are, are, should be sent out for evaluation because that can even doing something as simple as an ingrown toenail procedure could be problematic on this patient. That's why we don't do a matrixectomy or an ingrown toenail procedure on patients with really bad circulation. We'll take out the nail edge if it's infected, but we tend not to do a matrix. Um, because that, that, that chemical can be really slow to heal. Okay. Um, so there is vascular surgery or interventional radiology consult that can be done. And what we use that for is we want to evaluate circulation by a CT angiogram. So that's a CT is like a number of x-rays with some dye and they put some, this, this radioactive dye and it evaluates the blood flow and can determine if they can do anything to improve it. So basically if there is, you can see here, here's a nice straight line with the blood flow in the leg here is it, it's kind of broken off. And it, and it doesn't reach here the, the bottom. 
And so they have to re reopen those up. They can use like a rotor rooter. They can do other types of things, but usually they need some blood blood test before. And then the exam is called the CTA of abdomen and pelvis with lower extremity runoff, meaning it runs off here. So that's what we do in the office. So um, if you guys have uh, foot issues, I would recommend checking to see a doctor, but this is kind of what we use in our office. We use something called PadNet. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching.